Hey guys, I'm back and we're going to talk about the flight or fight mechanism in vitamin B1, one of my favorite vitamins. Um, let's just start with something called the autonomic nervous system. What is that? This is the system that adapts the body and the body's organs to its environment. It works behind the scenes and it's constantly making adjustments. So if your environment is stressful or you're going to sleep or you're eating or you're going out into the cold, your body's going to adapt to that um, environment. Now, there's two main uh, divisions of the autonomic nervous system. There's actually a third one. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, you have the parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. And this operates in safe mode. When everything is safe, you're calm, you're relaxed. But as soon as you go through stress, it kicks over here into this other system, which is the sympathetic nervous system. Completely different. Uh, kind of the opposite functions. This prepares you for stress. Now, the autonomic nervous system goes throughout the entire body in different connections to the, uh, the nerves in the back, uh, the nerves in the lower spine, and even in the brainstem. So in the brainstem, you have basic functions of survival, heart rate, breathing, hunger, satiety, flight or fight, which is basically running away from a tiger, or fighting the tiger, okay? And then reproduction. So nowadays, we're not actually being chased by a tiger. That was long ago. However, mentally, we are being chased by a tiger. Very similar reactions. The only problem is there's no tiger in the room. So if you're under stress for a, a long time, you start to become sympathetic dominant. And this affects your sleep, the quality of sleep. You are no longer in safe mode. Now, one of the most common first symptoms is anxiety, nervousness, can't relax. When it gets severe, you can go into panic mode, panic attacks. That is definitely sympathetic dominant. Uh, nightmares. So when these symptoms become chronic, uh, it's basically the failure of the sympathetic nervous system to keep up. Because normally what happens is that you, you kick in the stress mode, and then when the stress is done, this system kicks in to help you recover. Now, what's interesting about this system is this is an active system. There's something in your body that actively uh, is trying to calm you down, like when you're sleeping, for example, or let's say you exercise and you get your pulse rate really high and then you stop working out. Uh, this system kicks in there and works hard to push down. You can kind of look at it like a, like a wave, a push down wave to push down the heart rate to calm the nervous system down, to help you get into deep sleep, okay? But when you're sympathetic dominant, this can't happen anymore. So you don't repair, you can't rejuvenate. Now, the autonomic nervous system needs a lot of B1. Vitamin B1 is not your regular B vitamin. It has, it's probably one of the most important vitamins for the nervous system, not just the general nervous system, but the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and definitely the autonomic nervous system. Now, the deficiencies of vitamin B1 are identical to failure of the autonomic nervous system to function. So if you have damage to your autonomic nervous system, those symptoms are exactly the same as being deficient in vitamin B1. And one of the reasons for that is that your nervous system needs so much B1 to actually function. So check out some of the symptoms of B1. POTS, what is POTS? That's a condition where you stand up and you get really dizzy and you, you have to sit down. Okay, there's a lot of other symptoms connected to that, but that's one big one. Depression, of course, we talked about anxiety. Tension, nervous tension in your body. The feeling of stress. Confusion, difficulty concentrating. It's called ADD. Hyperactivity, you see that a lot in children, right? Disoriented, you see that in uh, people that have Alzheimer's or dementia. Irritability. You see that with your spouse, right? Unusual fatigue. Like there should be no reason why you're tired, yet you're tired all the time. Fibromyalgia. These are very common symptoms of the B1 deficiency. There are a lot more, but these are very common. So when you're deficient in B1, you inhibit the body's ability to adapt to its environment. So you get weird symptoms too, like let's say, for example, you have cold feet in warmer weather, or you're getting hot feet in colder weather, okay? Or you sweat when it's cold outside. 
or you get out of the shower and you just start sweating for no reason. Or you're working out or exercising in a hot environment and you're not sweating. Or you're tired after you eat. I mean, that's weird. Food is supposed to give you energy. Why would you be tired after you consume food? Or you, you're dizzy when you stand up. So these are very common symptoms. So now the question is, what would cause a B1 deficiency? All right, Stress is a big one. Chronic stress is going to deplete vitamin B in the nervous system, and you're going to have some of these symptoms right here. So the more stress that you go through, the more B1 your body requires. All right, number two, refined sugars and refined carbohydrates. If you're consuming a lot of sugar or refined carbs, you need a ton of B1. The problem is when you refine carbohydrates, you're consuming carbohydrates void of B1. Because when you're consuming like natural uh, sugar cane in its whole form or grains in its whole form, there's actually a lot of B1 in there. But when you refine them, there's no B1. So when you consume these foods, you deplete your B1 reserves and you start getting these symptoms right here. Too much coffee can deplete B1. Too much tea can deplete B1. Chocolate can deplete B1. Drinking wine can deplete vitamin B1. So the reason I really wanted to do this video is to show you the huge connection between B1 and stress and your diet and the autonomic nervous system. So if you're in a flight or fight mode or have any of these symptoms, nutritional yeast is a really good source of B1. Now I'm not against taking some synthetic B1 if it's short term and if you're also taking some natural at the same time because anytime you take large amounts of one vitamin it can knock out the other, other vitamins. Nutritional yeast is a really good source. Another good source is something called benfotamine. Benfotamine is a fat soluble B1. It gets absorbed into the brain and nervous system by a factor of 25 times more than the regular B1, which is water soluble. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.